Hello. Herosia Scheib here uh, with another one of my thought bubbles and I'm here to talk about all right um, Segue 2x and my thoughts on it it's been a couple of days uh, it completely seems to be confirmed ish if you will a little ish on that that is canceled but we will see we'll see what uh, November 16th rolls around uh, if there's still going to be a fork or not, even if it is a uh, minority hash power fork, there's rumors on that. Um, we'll get into that in a moment, but I just wanted to hit three key points about my thoughts about Segway 2X and its constellation and just the, like the state of the community, if you will. Um, one, uh, it's very clear that the community is still very devoid. Um, that were, I wouldn't say completely fractured, but we definitely have subgroups, if you will, a set of subgroups that each have a different ideology, motivations about what sovereign wealth is. And that's what Bitcoin enables and allows is sovereign wealth. And everyone has a different uh, version of it. Um, or concept or ideas, and they're all working this out. I mean, you have to think about this. Um, was it Toshi? Ten years, no, nine years ago. I'm sorry. Uh, released his white paper. He was in enacting, or say, proposing a vision that many people have been trying for centuries now to do, in different avenues, in different ways, in different methodologies, and they've all failed. Uh, even in the digital realm. This has been attempted before, this whole concept of digital cash, if you will. Digital currency, transacting over the internet through payment formats. Uh, divorce of centralized authority. Peer-to-peer, -peer, back to the individual level. When the software was released eight years ago, soon come January nine years ago, it was the first enactment of that ideology, that vision, if you will, that idea. I wouldn't say ideology, but that idea of individual sovereign wealth. Divorce from any central authority, divorce from any central power, uh, very peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, you can choose to engage in an act and commit yourself to whatever level you want to ensure your sovereign wealth. You have a say almost on every level, if you will. To whatever degree you want to do it, with that, you know, say is entirely up to you. And everyone has a different concepts and different visions of this, you know, to the extent of what is valued, what is not valued, what is more emphasized, what is not emphasized, and we're, we're seeing that. So this is the reason why there's different altcoins, I, oh no, not altcoins, crypto coins, sticking with my own term. Crypto coins in existence. Um, they began as alternatives to Bitcoin and now become something of their own thing. Many of them. Now, yes, a lot of them are just mining to obtain more BTC. Others are just out there. Many, many are scams. But there's enough out there that have utility of some function or form that's not currently. present in Bitcoin, whether it be um, privacy, whether it be um, maybe being a little bit more GPU friendly, for now at least, uh, transactions designed to be low, consensus mechanisms that are uh, different, not necessarily better, but different than what is currently um, at Bitcoin. Lightning Network, SegWit being activated before it was activated on Bitcoin. I believe Decred is about to activate Lightning Network somewhere time by the end of the, either this month or beginning of December. Um, some are not designed to be payment platforms at all, like Ethereum. They're designed to be for smart contracts. Um, some are just designed to be tokens or mechanisms of utility for a singular purpose. Uh, for utilization of a particular product, if you will, like an access point, 
you have these tokens and then you can gain access to a wide range of products designed by a particular company. So there's that. And because of that, it's uh, put pressure on Bitcoin a little bit as far as price, as far as development, as far as usage. And this is a good thing. And that's what free markets do, um, which is where I'm getting to my point where because of SegWit 2 being called off, people are like, we need to be, you know, with Bitcoin, there should be no, you know, crypto, other crypto coins or shit coins or anything like that. Everything should be on Bitcoin. One, one coin. And I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. I've never been a Bitcoin maximalist. I believe you should be utilizing as many tools as possible, as many ways as possible. This is the time to really early on to um, break things, work things out, get things going. Um, some of it is not necessary about just gaining wealth. Some of it is about uh, finding what is the best methodology to gain wealth. And it's not necessarily maybe be uh, Bitcoin. Uh, it could be other things. Competition is important. Um, and yes, for a financial instrument, you do need competition. And this is where I have, you know, where I break away from many people who are very well educated and have strong econ I understand where they're coming from, from their strong economic uh, stance about monetary policy and about money and how you can't have multiple currencies. But my thing is that that's, I'm going to call it 20th century thinking, but it's really just, you know, the eons of the development of the way our monetary system has come to fruition is all those economic policies, all those economic concepts and developments and charts and theories and understanding of, the, of economics have all been based upon a centralized authority, whether it be a theocracy whether it be like a monarchy or our current system of democracies, semi-democracies, republics, uh, communism, central planning, banking structures. Uh, they don't want no centralized authority wants competition. They want only their currency to be able to do what they will with it. And it doesn't necessarily mean the interest of the state or even the interest of individuals. It's the interest of those who control the central authority. So when you're thinking about these types of economic policies, and we've been around just basically primarily for eons, a centralized authority system that has been dispensing and governing um, the economies one way or another, of course they don't want competition. So why in developing a new economic platform, a new economic system, are you going to port this old concept into this new economy system of centralized planning or centralized thought of just one cryptocurrency or one existing um, coin. It's, it's silly. There could be multiple coins for multiple usages, for multiple things. I think it's very important you don't have one coin to rule them all. Um, this is a new system, so let's do new things. Let's try new things. Uh, let's break a few things in the way, in the process. Not necessarily break Bitcoin but break the existing concepts of how economies are supposed to run. And in a way, Bitcoin is already doing that. So that was my, my point about just, you know, porting this old concept about um, centralized authority and monetary systems that might not necessarily be completely applicable to Bitcoin in and of itself or cryptocurrencies in general in this space. My second point here is grace is a thing, okay? Grace is a thing. Um, I realize those who are no 2x are declaring victory. They're literally taking names and saying to take these businesses out, take these people out. They're for Segwit. They were you know, attack on Bitcoin, they were uh, seeking out to destroy it, malicious, backroom deals and stuff like that. And the only side note I have to that is, you know, it's one thing to, to touch down dance in the end zone. 
It's another thing to touch down down in the end zone, leave the end zone, start touchdowning down the whole length of the, of the field, and then come back around, touchdown dance in front of your opposing team, spike the ball in their face, and get very spiteful. People don't like that. It's bad sportsmanship. Um, and there's a lot of bad conduct still going on. Um, the animosity hasn't simmered or, or dimmed or anything like that. So people are going to remember those who were gracious and saying, okay, you know, this didn't work out. They didn't get their way. That's great. And let's move on. Instead of just going out and attacking these other businesses and saying, remember them and you shouldn't do business with them or blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, that doesn't bode well. If people don't want to do businesses with um, individuals that uh, supported 2X, they weren't already doing business with them already. They've already moved their money. They stopped utilizing their service. They have moved on. The other thing that is in, um, attached to that is the fact that, you know, this background deal, which it was, of a small group of corporations, which smallish, I mean, they did have majority mining power. They did have a lot of the large Bitcoin companies signed on and states signed on and support. Some have moved off, some moved on, some were only like for SegWit and not for the 2X part, stated that or stated right afterwards or stated a little bit longer, a little bit later, but it was because of backroom deals, because a bunch of corporations got together that even SegWit even activated. Up to that point, it was only 30%. And yes, there's a reason for that. It was ASIC boost. You know, miners, which they have a right to do, have found a methodology that allowed them to have more energy efficiency in achieving um, mining. It wasn't a game in the system, necessarily. I think it was bad play. I think they could have disclosed that and let um, people know that's what they were doing and that no, you can't have our technique but make the company uh, people more aware so the community can either respond in kind, develop their own techniques, um, work with them better, uh, different ways. I think it was just bad form, if you will, for an open source uh, community for them to keep that hidden. And I'm wondering if that even, even violates the kind of understanding of open source where if you take a code and add on to it and you don't release it, um, to the community, uh, disclose it to the community so that they can uh, add on to it as well. Whether or not that's with ASIC boosted, whether or not that's the case. Now, I don't know if that has to do with like individual programs. I know it's for individual programs, but could you do that for the entire open source ecosystem, something like Bitcoin, you know, with wallets and, um, you know, node implementation, uh, even the satellite thing that's going on. Um, you know, there, it seems like there's certain things that are happening that's, you know, becoming more proprietary stuff occurring in this open space. So it was bad for them on their part. And when that was discovered and people were aware of it, you gotta understand why SegWit wasn't activated. But that wasn't all miners. Okay, there were still 30%, but that's, what about the other 70%? Were all 70% using ASIC Boost? That doesn't really make sense. I know, I don't think Bitmain has that much pull or much sway. There's other miners, there's other ASIC chip makers. Um, a lot of people weren't developing SegWit wallets, uh, upgrading their nodes. None of that was occurring until this agreement. And yes, I know there was a user activated soft fork movement about nodes rejecting and splitting out the chain, but how would you do that with only 30% of the hashing power? and maybe even less where the miners might switch to the other chain just simply to stay with consensus because at 30% you don't have consensus. You don't have consensus to fully upgrade, even for a soft fork, if you will, uh, which has to do with the implementation. You had to get consensus to get the implementation. So it's interesting how it was okay to get that backdoor agreement to get SegWit activated but not for the two megabytes, so, and people remember that. People remember that. Um, should have said we'd have activated, you know, uh, the way things are going, the way uh, the slow transition in it is occurring, 
we'll see. We'll see in a year time whether or not SegWit should have activated or not. Um, see it's out in the community. Uh, oh, the other thing with SegWit before I go to my third point is that, you know, because it's a soft fork, nobody has to have, you know, those nodes be SegWit implemented. Nobody has to have SegWit wallet to do transactions. That go, goes for Coinbase. I know a lot of people are going after Coinbase because they were supporters of 2x, asking them to have SegWit wallets. They don't have to. They don't have to upgrade. That's the whole point of the soft, soft fork, is that you can still be on an old server or an old system. You can still be on Windows XP and still be on the internet. Um, and it doesn't make you vulnerable. Uh, there's no bugs or attacks like you would for Windows XP. It just means that you're not upgraded. You might not see everything if you're doing full node applications when it comes to SegWit, but for the transaction of using the one address, which is the original uh, Bitcoin address, non-SegWit address, the one, then, you know, um, you're just paying a higher fee, if you will, currently as we speak. Now, through time, as more people get SegWit activated, I guess the fee market might change. And we might end up seeing two different markets. We might see a SegWit, or four different markets. We might see a SegWit market, a non-SegWit market, those who pay those higher fees, those pay mid-range fees and low fees. So we'll see where that, where that takes us. But as far as Coinbase and some of the other um, big wallet providers and payment providers, uh, if you're according to them, and whether that's not true or not, some are a little suspicious about their numbers, if you're unwrapping 500,000 people like a week, I think I saw, it might be a month, but I think it's a week, uh, you don't want to confuse them by starting with a, saying, okay, there's this one address and then there's this three address. It's, you know, you want to unwrap people the best way possible. And currently as we stand with the one address having, having been around for consistently on the platform for almost eight years, you don't want to switch on people so rapidly like that, especially new people who might not be even moving their coins in the first place. They're using Bitcoin as a storage value, not as a payment platform. So they might be keeping it with Coinbase. Yes, I know. If you don't control your private keys, you don't control your Bitcoin. If you don't control your private keys, you don't control your Bitcoin. And that goes for all the crypto coins. If you don't control your private keys, you don't control your coin. But Coinbase has made their service very, uh, a little bit more friendlier than um, the do-it-yourself methodology, if you will. And so they have vaults, they have um, direct payment through your bank account, which uh, I might do an ad hoc of some of the issues I have in the space that I've been seeing. But the point is, with the whole software update of Utubination, is you don't have to upgrade. You don't, you can still stay back in version whatever and still be on the network so there's that and the third thing and the final thing that ties with coinbase is don't think when lightning network or storage and signatures or um or any other company is going to be right on board with any upgrade from here on out. They're gonna slow asset, they're gonna slow their feet. They might even um, move out of the Bitcoin space and go into other coins. Uh, I'm not saying they're gonna go into Bitcoin Cash or anything like that, but they might go to a Litecoin, they might go to Ethereum. And I think a lot of them might end up going to Ethereum. They might go somewhere else or they do much as miners, they might just slow asset and not activate it and you'll start seeing like once again, a 30% hashing um, implementation when it comes to whatever upgrade and it's going to be much much more difficult to upgrade because miners and I know there's this pledge going on with bitcoin.org wanting to say that miners don't control the network and they don't it's there but they're a piece of the network and you need them to secure the networks and you need them to propagate the upgrades just as you need notes a lot of notes to propagate the upgrade to have a you know majority to keep security to prevent double spending 
Um, you need more full notes than you de need SUV notes. It's as simple as that. Um, and more importantly, full notes that are writing notes at the same time. But, yeah. It's, it's going to be very slow going. Um, I've already seen it, and I think it's a little petty, but people are petty. If they're not going to, you know, bring on developers or fund any developer group that might be maintaining uh, the Bitcoin network. So that goes for uh, Bitcoin Core, Blockstream, stuff like that. Um, it's very petty, but it's their right to be petty, if you will. They can do that if they like. I think they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. I think um, there was a point made on Block Digest, I forget which one of the hosts said it, where you're building off of the labor of other people for pretty much for free volunteers to make your, your millions and billions and you're not putting back in or inputting back in. That's, that's egregious and it is, but they can do that. That's the whole point of a voluntary system. You can volunteer whatever level you want to volunteer with, put your money at whatever level you want to do, do whatever you want really as long as you don't direct harm and if they don't want to help with the development of Bitcoin they don't use their service that's you know you can disassociate yourself with them say that's not a service I want to be part of but you can't make them fund the development of Bitcoin you can't make anyone fund the development of Bitcoin you can barely get people who use Bitcoin to part with whatever bits to help in the development of Bitcoin. There's donation addresses. There's been donation addresses for various Bitcoin developers for quite some time. So it's, it's not just companies. It's, it's kind of everyone in the space, really, when it comes to parting your bits. So that's my three points. I had another kind of side tangent about Segwit2x. Oh, this possibility that it might still happen with this group, which is a rumor. No one's been able to verify the existence of this mining group that allegedly has 30% of the Bitcoin hashing power. So it's just a matter of seeing come November 16th and whether or not there is going to be still a hard fork. The code's out there. People have the code. They were part of that group. They can easily implement it if they want to. They could be very silly. I do think that they, you will see a shift in mining of different um, networks, whether it be Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, or other places. They might not take a full amount of their hashing power away, but I think they'll take it their percentage of way, which will leave an open space for anyone who wants to Bitcoin mine can jump in and take a grab, but I imagine that there will be a dip, a little bit dip, um, within the hashing power of the network. I don't think you're going to see a full recommitment. There's rumors that Bitmain has bought or developed a number of different ma uh, mining rigs for the purpose of them mining Bitcoin Cash, which they were already doing, but now they're going to do like a full implementation, a full amount of their resources. So there's that. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting time. We are through the looking glass, Alice, and a lot of a lot of strangeness, a lot of true faces showing, and I think it's important because while a lot of people are seeing this as attack, they have no concept of what a real economic attack on your wealth is. Okay. Uh, you ever heard of redlining? You ever heard of you can't join this union? It's in our bylaws. In fact, uh, I remember seeing a story about maybe a year or two years ago where this couple was shocked to find uh, they were purchasing a, a home. Uh, it was an older home. They were going to like fix up and redo. They were in an area where it was very nice and that was the thing to do. And on the title, on the deed, it states, you can't sell this property to any Negroes. It's actually on the title of the home that they're purchasing. 
and they couldn't change it because it was written back, you know, 50, 60 years ago, and that's, that's the way it was, that you could legislate and culturally and socially prevent the economic development or attack of a group of people. So trust me when I say you have no, no concept of what a true economic attack is at all in this space. You're speaking greatly from a sense of privilege. Doesn't mean that you, there is an attack that's going to come. They will come. It doesn't mean that they're not happening. I'm just saying that you you have no concept of really what a full-on attack on the system. And the Segway 2X, it wasn't it. It wasn't an attack, trust me. You know it just like when you get hit in the face. You know it when you feel it. You almost not know it when you see it. But, yeah. Uh, this is a minor thing. I want to say a minor. It's a minor major thing. A little bit of a setback. A little re uh, realignment of the community. Seeing who is fully committed to the concept of sovereign wealth. Who is fully committed to the enabling and allowing for the development of anyone and everyone being participants of cryptocurrency in this space on an equitable level. Uh, changes are going to come. We'll see what the new year shakes out. I know the price has dropped, but I've never been very concerned about the price. I've been more concerned about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency's existence in the first place. It being existing with enough nodes, enough wallets, enough money, power, enough utility, and not being, you know, complete utter trash or scam. Uh, but that's it for now. Those are my thoughts. Um, comment below, like, and share. And um, thank you for subscribing. I know some of you may have came over from James Bond's channel. I have always have a link in the show notes to his channel. So go there um, if you've never heard of him before. He's a great uh, listen. And another great listen is Sky. The life of Sky. He's over from the over the pond. Great listen. He's been going on about BitConnect and breaking down how it's a scam in a very funny and very personal, very uh, common man way, where it's not a very technical, if you will say, uh, very no bullshit way, which I really appreciate. He's a very tired man. He's got five kids already, and he already has another one on the way. Poor dude. Poor dude. But anyways, give him a like. Support him on Steam It. Uh, you know, a little bit of coin, a little bit of Steam It goes a long way. And to the moon.